to the first and only episode of Quick Court Cases. I'm your host, Fayaz, and I'm Christopher, and today we'll be talking about a case that limited the president's power and gave publishers the right to publish classified information without getting prosecuted. So the court case in question today is New York Times versus U.S. First things first, this case took place in 1971 and revolved around the then-classified Pentagon Papers. Now for some background. It all started when the Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, ordered for there to be a secret study done on the Pentagon. This study was called the Pentagon Papers. Now in this document, there are over 7,000 pages loaded with our government's dark secrets about the Vietnam War, ranging from illegal bombings to the use of deadly chemicals. So now this dude named Daniel Ellsberg comes along, he helped write the report, and he sends a total of 43 out of the total 47 volumes of the document to the New York Times, well copy them at least, to a guy named Neil Sheeman to publish them. So now our favorite president, Richard Nixon, hears about what this Ellsberg dude decided to do. And then he decides that this puts our nation at risk and legally incarcerates him under the Espionage Act, which states that any disloyal, profane, or spurious, abusive language about the form of government in the United States or the flag of the United States or the uniform of the Army or Navy will be prohibited. So then a few months later, all that happened in March, the New York Times posts their Sunday edition on June 13th, 1971. And this includes their first article from the Pentagon Papers. And then, the government goes crazy. They decide to get a restraining order on the New York Times for posting any more content from the Pentagon Papers, saying it would cause irreparable injury to the defense of the interests of the United States, and wanted to enjoin the New York Times and the Washington Post from publishing the contents of the classified study entitled History of the U.S. Decision Making, Process of the Vietnam Policy. And that is where we get our key question. Were President Nixon's efforts to prevent the publication of Pentagon Papers unconstitutional? So on June 25th and 26th of the same year, things moved fast, taking only about three months. The Supreme Court heard the arguments on both sides. The government complained about their security and the violation of the Espionage Act. And the Times reminded the court of the First Amendment, which is titles it to freedom of press. While they did discuss how they obtained these papers, which was also investigated elsewhere, the main issue was whether or not they could publish it. And we're back to find out more about this case. As I told you at the start, the case enforced the First Amendment, so the court ruled six to three that Nixon's efforts to prevent the publication of government papers were unconstitutional. The First Amendment still gives Duffberg and the New York Times the ability to publish information about the government, and ruled that the intent of the release of the Pentagon Papers was to educate the public. And, on top of all that, Daniel Ellsberg was released from jail with all of his charges nullified. Anyway, let's hear some opinions from the courtrooms. Hello, I'm Justice Black, and I carried out the majority opinion. This is what I said. The people should not be deprived or abridged of their right to speak, to write, or to publish their sentiments, and the freedom of press as one of the great bulwarks of liberty shall be inviolable. Ah, uh, I'm Justice Blackman, and I had the dissenting opinion. I said, the First Amendment, after all, is only one part of an entire constitution. Article 2 of the great document vests in the executive branch primary power over the conduct of foreign affairs, and places in that branch the responsibility for the nation's safety. So what was the impact of the case? Well, as we said at the start, it enforced the First Amendment because the freedom of press was denied, even though classified and secret documents were being handed out to the public. Also, the president's power decreased because Nixon was, in the end, unable to do anything to stop the Pentagon Papers from being released. In conclusion, this landmark case had an impact on the First Amendment, strengthening it, and in turn, weakening the president's power. Thank you for watching this episode of Quick Course Cases. Until next episode, which is never, goodbye! Bye. <laughs>